Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 231. We have some movement in Judge Preska's courtroom. It looks like Judge Preska has ordered a hearing for next Tuesday in the case of Virginia Roberts versus Ghislaine Maxwell and in the separate case of Virginia Roberts versus Alan Dershowitz. Now, these are two separate civil cases, and we heard last night that Dershowitz, while he's embroiled in his own civil dispute, is also trying to gain access to the documents, the sealed documents, in the Ghislaine Maxwell case as well. And in my opinion, the only reason that he would be doing that is because he is named within those documents as well, and he knows that the material is damaging. So what we have here now is Judge Preska sticking to her word and making sure that this process continues in an expedited manner. Now, I'm very interested to see what ends up getting released, what ends up staying sealed, and what ends up being released but redacted. Because we know that there's going to be redactions of some of this, and we also have to prepare ourselves for the fact that some of it probably won't be released. But I think a good portion of this stuff could see the light of day, folks. I think that Judge Preska especially has had enough of this nonsense, and it looks like she is trying to make things move in a a very quick manner here to get the ball rolling, which is awesome, considering that has not been the case throughout the whole entire time when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein. Everything has been drag your feet, drag your feet, kick the can down the road, wait, 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 and maybe people will forget. It doesn't look like Preska is following that same pattern here. This article is from Law and Crime. The headline, Federal Judge Sets Hearing for Next Week in Two Jeffrey Epstein-Related Cases. The author of this article is Matt Nahum. The federal judge presiding over two Jeffrey Epstein-related cases has scheduled a hearing for Tuesday afternoon. The matter involves separate civil lawsuits filed by alleged by Epstein survivor Virginia Roberts against Ghislaine Maxwell and Harvard law professor Alan, I kept my underpants on, Dershowitz. So we've been following this from the jump and it has been an up and down battle, right, for these uh, documents to see the light of day. And it has been a struggle from the beginning for these survivors to get a fair shake. So it's nice to see that at the very least, things are moving forward here in Judge Preska's court, right? Because we know when Dershowitz is involved and Ghislaine Maxwell is involved, justice is usually far, far away. The Friday order from, the, from U.S. Senior District Judge Loretta Preska. Loretta A. Preska, Senior United States District Judge, Counsel for the parties in the above-captioned actions shall appear for a telephonic conference on June 23, 2020 at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The parties are directed to call in promptly at 2 p.m. So this, this uh, conference will take place at 2 p.m. Then you figure it'll probably be, I don't know, an hour, two hours, something like this maybe? And then you would think that there will be reporting coming out right directly after it as to what occurred during that hearing. So as soon as we have an update, obviously, I'll make sure that we talk about it here on the podcast and keep adding some more meat to the bone. In May, Judge Preska accelerated the process for unsealing documents that name the names of non-party individuals. Documents which are part of a years-old defamation case that Roberts brought against Epstein's alleged Madam Maxwell, co-conspirator. And this is what I was talking about with uh, Judge Preska just a second ago. Um, with her accelerating the process the way she did, it's definitely a big opening and a, a big win for Virginia here, in my opinion, because I really believe that this documentation is going to come out now. Whereas before, before Preska made the ruling to accelerate all of this, it was really pretty touch and go. You you didn't have an idea one way or the other, but considering the way this case has gone previously, well, I'm always leaning towards the fact that the prosecution is going to bungle things. But it looks like Preska is actually on a course here to try and, at the very least, move this in a manner where we're not waiting around forever. 
Maxwell called Roberts a liar and Roberts sued. And good for Virginia. Virginia knows the deal. She knows she's telling the truth. She has the truth on her side, right? So if you have the truth on your side, what do you do? Hell yeah. You go after the people that are defaming you. You go after the people that are slandering your name. And that's exactly what Virginia Roberts did here. And I'll tell you what, it was a very brave move on her part. Though Roberts' defamation case against Maxwell ended in 2015, Roberts' attorneys have fought a protracted legal battle seeking to unseal documents initially filed under seal that may contain allegations against other public figures involved in Epstein's infamous elite social circle and child sex trafficking scheme. I'm not going to use the word alleged like the author does here. I understand why the author is using the word alleged here, but we're past that, right? At this point, we know that these aren't allegations. We know that these are credible. This is credible stuff. We know that it occurred with Jeffrey Epstein. We know that he was molesting kids. We know that he was molesting girls. And we know that he was molesting these survivors who have come forward and put him and his friends on blast. So I'm not going to use the word alleged, okay? Maxwell, though, often accused of being a top Epstein co-conspirator, has long denied wrongdoing. Yeah, that's fine and well. Keep denying it. Go into the courtroom and deny it under oath. What are you waiting for? What are you hiding from? Why are you ducking and dodging and slinking around in holes, Ghislaine Maxwell? If you're innocent, come forward, bring your buddy Andy with you, head over to the local FBI office, and sit down for a nice fireside chat with your local FBI interrogator. If you're so innocent, I don't see what the big deal is. If you're so innocent, I don't see why you're ducking and dodging summons. If you're so innocent, I don't see why you're hiding in holes like a scared, injured animal. Most recently, Maxwell's lawyers filed objections to unsealing of certain documents because they are afforded the lowest presumption of public access. The filing noted that the series of pleadings concerns Robert's attempt to compel Miss Maxwell to answer intrusive questions about her sex life and quotes extensively, selectively, and misleadingly from Miss Maxwell's first seven-hour deposition. Think about that now for a minute, folks, okay? Remember when I I, I I keep talking about the information that is in the public view and then the information that they have close to the vest, the FBI, et cetera, et cetera? They have a seven-hour deposition with Ghislaine Maxwell. What do you think was said during that deposition? What sort of avenues do you think were cruised during that interview? What did she reveal? What did Ghislaine Maxwell have to say while she was being deposed? Or did she just plead the fifth and not say anything, just like her buddy Jeffrey Epstein did? It's very important that we see the information from this, and it's very important for the, the uh, criminal cases as well that this stuff is released and it's brought to light. Roberts, in addition to accusing Prince Andrew of sexual abuse, has claimed that Dershowitz, a former Epstein lawyer, knew about Epstein's operation and was also a participant. And this is the crux of it for me with Alan Dershowitz, right? Look, I'm never going to fault a criminal defense attorney for defending a client. In the United States of America, the biggest scumbags amongst us are entitled to legal representation. So I'm never going to fault somebody for being a lawyer, right? But I will fault you for hanging out with human traffickers. I will fault you for partaking in Jeffrey Epstein's sordid plans and plots. And I will fault you for the way you have gone about your business and you have tried to destroy people like Virginia Roberts. All because you're a powerful attorney, Mr. Harvard, Mr. I have friends everywhere, Mr. I was the teacher of God knows how many of these judges. Well, Mr. Dershowitz, your days of going on the TV shows and gaslighting people, that's over. You need to answer some hard questions, my friend, and you need to answer them under oath. Roberts claimed that she was forced to have sex with multiple rich and powerful men, including Dershowitz. According to Roberts, Dershowitz had sex with her while she was a minor and working for Epstein. And we know that that, 
um, Dershowitz was over at Epstein's houses. We know that he was over there and we know that he was in New Mexico. Why? He says he was in New Mexico for one hour. Folks, let me tell you, I was just there in February. There is no reason to go to New Mexico for one hour. Certainly not to Santa Fe or Zorro Ranch. It's in the middle of nowhere. What were you really doing there, Mr. Dershowitz? I highly doubt, in my opinion, that you were there for one hour. Your story just does not make sense, sir. Dershowitz, who was among the attorneys who represented Epstein and secured him a controversial plea deal more than a decade ago, has repeatedly denied Robert's claims, calling her a certified, complete, total liar. And you see, I take umbrage with all of that. So let me answer Mr. Dershowitz and his bullshit right here and right now. Dear Alan Dershowitz, only a scuzzbag continues to talk about somebody who has been through what Virginia has been through the way you talk about her. It is not only offensive, it is the hallmark of a coward. And that, sir, is what I think you are. A straight up, no good coward. A man who associated with the worst of the worst amongst us and smiled about it and went to his, uh, his mansions and went to his uh, islands and did all the things that friends do. And then you have the audacity to try and distance yourself from all of that by claiming you were just his lawyer? Sir, you are a certified, complete, and total liar, in my opinion. Robert's defamation lawsuit asserted that Dershowitz's statements about her claims are knowably false and maliciously designed cover up his own, to cover up his own wrongdoing while discrediting, discrediting her claims. And we know this isn't far out of the box for Dershowitz. This is how this dude rolls. Look what he did to those poor girls during the first arrest. Behind the scenes, they were completely destroying these girls' reputations as they were. These are little kids, bro, and they're, you're destroying their reputations because of social media posts? As if any of us are perfect. As if any of us didn't run around in our teens acting the fool. I most certainly did. I'm not, I'll never sit here and judge somebody for what they did when they were 15, 16, 20 years old. People grow up. Shit happens. None of us are perfect. And for Dershowitz and the prosecutors to do what they did to those poor, poor girls the first time, or, uh, the first arrest, it just goes to show you the kind of person Dershowitz is. And you see it again here, calling Virginia a certified, complete, total liar. Take a good, long, hard look in the mirror, you crypt keeper looking MF. Dershowitz has repeatedly denied the veracity of, of Robert's allegations, insisting that the two have never even met. Yeah, okay, just like Prince Andrew, right? Just like your buddy, the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family. All of you are fellow travelers. You're all birds of a feather, and you all make me ill. Our position is that I've been truthfully, truthfully calling Roberts a liar regularly since she falsely accused me in 2014. Okay, well, let's just stop right there and let's just answer Mr. Dershowitz again. Mr. Dershowitz, in my opinion, and the opinion of those, you know, I don't ever speak for anybody, but I'm pretty sure I can speak for the audience here. Everybody listening to this thinks you're a liar. Everybody thinks that you're a reprehensible excuse for a human being. And the fact that you keep coming out and doubling down on your bullshit, you keep assailing Virginia's credibility, you keep calling her names, you keep calling her a liar, and you think you're just going to get away with it. Well, you, that might be the case in the legacy media where they treat you with kid gloves. That might be the case when you go on all the talk shows with all your buddies like Georgie Stepanopoulos, who was over at Epstein's hanging out with you. That might be the case there. But you're in the jungle when you come into an area like this, my friend. And the predators, well, the predators are the prey where we roll. I will continue to tell the truth whenever she falsely accuses me, Dershowitz previously told Law and Crime. If she, if she believed I defamed her in 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017, she could have sued me then. 
I will defend my First Amendment right to truthfully deny a false charge. To paraphrase Aldi Stevenson, if my false accuser stops lying about me, I will stop telling the truth about her. This dude has some guyons on him, okay? My friend, you have produced zero evidence supporting your wildish claims about Virginia Roberts, that she's a liar, etc., etc. You understand me? Ungats is what you have produced. Nothing. And you have the audacity to get up here and talk about you'll defend your First Amendment rights when you're the biggest chump of them all and you try and silence all of your critics along with your boy Les Wexner by pressuring people? Boy, you got another thing coming, Mr. I kept my underpants on, crip keeping looking MF. You got another thing coming. If you're going to charge hard like this and it's going to be all offense, well... I'm ready to meet you right in the middle of the octagon, bite down on my mouthpiece and throw because someone needs to eviscerate you. Somebody needs to call it what it is. And Mr. Dershowitz, from where I'm sitting, my friend, in my opinion, using my First Amendment rights, you are an absolute liar. In November 2019, Dershowitz filed counterclaims in the Southern District of New York claiming that Roberts libeled him and intentionally inflicted emotional distress through a campaign to spread malicious lies accusing Dershowitz of being a sexual predator, pedophile, abuser, child molester, and other negative epit- and other negative names. Well, yeah. Okay. So, let's see they'll see you in court. She's just using her first amendment right. Mr. Dershowitz, weren't you just championing the championing, uh, being the champion of the First Amendment right? Now all of a sudden, Virginia shouldn't use hers. Oh, it's all good when you and your friends are asserting your constitutional privileges, but when anybody else wants to assert their constitutional protections, oh, then it's a problem. Now we got a problem. Now I'm being defamed. Shut your yap. In the filing, Dershowitz said it was the truth that he was never in Epstein's residence in the presence of underage females. How can, he, how can he prove that? Did he card everybody that came through the door? What are you, the bouncer? What are you, standing at the door every time someone comes in? Hey, uh, sweetheart, come here. I got to see your ID, see if you're uh, overage. I'm uh, Alan Dershowitz. Oh, uh, hey. What does that even mean? How can you tangibly prove that no one, no one of the girls there were underage when everybody knows Epstein was a prolific predator of underage girls? Do you really think we're going to believe you, Mr. I kept my underpants on? In the filing... Dershowitz said it was the truth that he was never in Epstein's residence in the presence of underage females, and the truth that Roberts committed perjury as part of a scheme with her lawyers to falsely accuse him of sex trafficking as part of a criminal attempt to extort a settlement from another party. Oh yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Extorting money, huh? Again, Virginia's the one at fault here, right? She's the one that's, that's the problem. Ah, uh, who cares what happened to her? She's the problem. She's trying to extort money. No. Hell no. She is trying to get what is rightfully hers at this point for what you and the rest of your friends were up to. Using my First Amendment right, Mr. Dershowitz, I have to say, I don't believe a word that you have to say. And furthermore, if anyone's trying to extort anybody, You and the rest of your so-called polite society friends have been extorting the rest of us since time started. Dershowitz also reiterated that he never met or had any contact with Roberts as she falsely claims, that she has falsely accused him of heinous acts which have never happened, and that she never accused Dershowitz until she met her lawyers and was told she could profit from accusing him. All right, so this guy wants us to believe that Virginia's lawyers, David Boyes, Sigrid McCauley, Brad Edwards, etc., etc., are all in on this big plot, and they got Virginia in, uh, to, to lie and perjure herself just to go after Dershowitz and, and to get some money from him. My man, eye on the prize, okay? The real money's going to come from Epstein's estate. 
Not from you, Crypt Keeper, okay? Even though I'm sure you're sitting on a pile of uh, gold like smog in, in uh, Lord of the Rings. That's neither here nor there. You, my friend, have other issues to worry about. Dershowitz said that he aimed to prove that Robert's lawyers pressured her to include him as a participant in Epstein's alleged sex trafficking scheme along with the other rich and powerful men. Per the filing, Roberts has conspired with her lawyers to publish her false and defamatory claims and concerning Dershowitz with knowing or reckless disregard of their false falsity. Well, I don't, you know what? I think that's for the court to decide, not you, Mr. Dershowitz. So let's just skip all of this. Let's get right to discovery without any of your legal wrangling, without any of your loopholes, without any of your maneuvering, and let's see what's what. If you're so innocent, let's rock. She has done so with the specific intent and design that her statements be a source for the media so that the media will publish her false allegations and concerning Dershowitz that he had sex with her while she was underage as part of Epstein's criminal sex trafficking of minors. So, wait a minute. In their statement right here, they admit that Epstein was involved in criminal sex trafficking of minors. Meanwhile, just a few seconds ago, they were saying that Epstein was never at, uh, that uh, Dershowitz was never at Epstein's house with underage girls. So you mean to tell me that you're going to admit that Epstein was in charge of a criminal sex trafficking ring of minors, but Dershowitz, who was a regular guest of Epstein's, was never around those girls, huh? That's what you want us to believe. And you, you want us to believe Virginia's the liar? My friend, you better go back and reassess your whole entire story because this is the kind of shit nobody is believing. This is the kind of shit that you see on Law and Order before MFs end up getting arrested. Roberts has falsely and with a knowing and res- reckless disregard for, for disregard of falsity and acting out of ill will and spite publicly labeled Dershowitz as a child rapist and molester. Yeah, that's exactly what she has labeled you. And using my First Amendment right, Mr. Dershowitz, I believe her. All right? So there's that. For him to come out with this BS again and start his assault of Virginia all over again makes me crazy. This guy is one piece of work. He truly believes his nonsense. Well, we're going to see real soon where the chips fall. And we're going to see real soon just how arrogant Mr. Dershowitz is going to be. And we're going to see who the liar is real soon. As soon as we see what is inside of these documents, I have a feeling that all of the roaches are going to be scurrying away from the light. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. As usual, the link to the story will be in the description, as well as the link for the GoFundMe, etc., etc. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow, and we'll do it all over again. Enjoy your Friday night, and if you're going out, please do not drink and drive.